Uh, so my name is Umberto Modigliani. I'm the deputy director of forecast at ECMWF. And okay, this will be the first virtual computer tour uh, for me, for sure, but probably also for uh, for ECMWF in general. Uh, so what we'll try to do is to to show you a bit the how you would have visited the computer hall if you could have been physically uh, being at ECMWF. And then uh, we'll give you at the end uh, some uh, information on uh, the new data center that uh, is being uh, finalized in, in Italy, in Bologna, and the new supercomputer that uh, uh, we will install into this new data center. So I will start this, uh, the, the video itself and, and stop it a bit uh, while we walk. So this is just the entrance. Uh, of the computer hall. Uh, so here uh, you enter from uh, uh, the left of the screen if you want. What you are seeing at the moment is not the supercomputer, it's just a, a, the new tape library. And we will go back to that uh, later on. So we keep walking in. And then I will stop soon. Okay. So what you now see is one of the two supercomputers that we have installed in the data center in, in Sheenfield uh, Park. So what we are visiting now virtually is the computer hall that has been built when ECMWF was created and uh, located in Sheenfield Park. So it's a data center that is already uh, 40 years old. Uh, and this is the we are in the main computer hall. The whole size of this computer hall is about 1,000 square meters. And what you just see now is the front of one of the Cray uh, systems that we, we are using currently operationally. These are uh, two Cray XC40 systems. Uh, and we have been using them uh, starting uh, about uh, six years ago. Now. Uh, we'll continue moving a little bit. Then I'll give you a bit more details. Okay, so what you now see at the end, uh, well, towards the left here of the screen, uh, at the end of this first row of servers uh, is a bit of the storage. Uh, this uh, kind of, uh, I guess you can all see my pointer. Uh, so this area here is a storage disk space. So typically what we have at ECMWF uh, since many years is two identical supercomputers, which at the moment uh, are provided by a contract with, uh, with Cray. One of this supercomputer is installed in the main computer hall, which is what you are seeing now, and another one in uh, what we call the extension computer hall, which we'll see at the end of this uh, virtual visit. These two supercomputers are made of, um, if you want, two main parts, the compute cluster, which is uh, what you saw at the very beginning, and all this area, and uh, a bit extended at the back and more the data kind of a storage cluster all the where you have all the five system sites so let's continue to move around the system so you can see now that there are two main rows that are full and one third row that is only partially complete so the whole system is made by uh, as you can see many cabinets uh, this pair of cabinets is called uh, an electrical group. It's the main building block of this Cray system. In total, uh, in each one of these compute clusters, and we have, uh, as I say, two main supercomputers, there are about 3,500 nodes, servers. These are like uh, relatively standard, in, if you want, servers in the sense that they have two, uh, uh, two uh, processors, in, which are Intel processors. These are multi-core uh, systems as, as usual. 
in our case, these are uh, Broadwell cores. We have 36 uh, physical cores per processor. And in each one of the of these uh, you know, two cabinets, uh, you have uh, about uh, 200 of these uh, surveys. So it's about I think it's 96 for each one of these sites. So 96 times two, typically. Uh, let's see if we can see. Okay, so here you can see slightly better uh, the, the the back of this system. Of course, if we would be there, it would be slightly easier to see. But you can get the feeling of uh, you know the kind of uh, connections that are uh, going in between the various uh, servers. So the main you know, characteristic, if you want, of, uh, of a supercomputer like this one that uh, ECMWF is using is that it's not just a bunch of uh, many servers uh, connected using a standard type of, uh, say, gigabit type of network, but is using a specialized, which in this particular case is even a proprietary type of uh, interconnect that is connecting all the servers uh, together. And what you hopefully you can see a little bit, this cabling part. So this is the first uh, kind of uh, level uh, of the connection between the servers in these uh, two cabinets, this electrical group. So these are more if you want tightly connected they are closer to each other physically and also electronically if you want and then you can only see maybe slightly at the at the top you have you see this uh, this this part here and through this the you 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 will have these cables that you can hardly see these are green cables so these are optical cables so that go and connect each pair to each other in the system and create the, the full mesh, if you want. Uh, this is a, an hypercube type of network. In total, in each system, we have uh, something like 130,000 cores. And if you look, uh, I mean, now this is a relatively old, uh, if you want, a system. Uh, we should uh, have uh, replaced that by now. Uh, but if you look in the top 500, the list, this is about in the 60s or something, each one of these systems. Yeah? Uh, our main goal as ECMWF is not exactly to have the most powerful system per se, but to have the, you know, the, the best system that we, we need for our own purpose and also to have a reliability. That is why we have two identical systems. So we, we, we don't want to have a, one system will just go down. Uh, the other thing maybe to mention is that for these kind of systems, we have a service contract with the provider. So we don't actually buy the system. We have a contract which typically lasts four years, can be extended normally for another two or so. And then we, we normally have another tender to procure the next system. So we continue to move. And here you can see a bit better the the storage part. So uh, I highlight this because the storage is also an important component. And I see that in your training, I think you're spending quite a bit of time on, on I.O., uh, which is uh, you know, quite important these days for many reasons. Uh, so here we have about 10 petabyte of storage disk storage uh, in this particular case it's mostly disk storage based attach uh, well it's not really attached uh, to this particular system because this part this storage here can also be accessed by the other compute cluster in the other extension of the computer board so both compute cluster can access both sort of storage uh, and this is quite useful uh, in a number of situations, uh, in particular to, to get a, a higher utilization of the system for uh, the research workload that is running on these systems. Uh, while for operational work, we have uh, 
dedicated uh, and replicated uh, storage on each computer hole. Uh, so the other point maybe to, to mention, which I guess you are interested in, is that on this supercomputer, we, we, ECMWF runs both operational work and research work at the same time. Uh, so we don't have a dedicated system just for operational work. When we run operational work, most of one system is dedicated to this operational work, but as soon as this operational work is finished, then there is research work running on, on the system. So it's quite important for ECMWF to have a very efficient way of scheduling work on the, on the supercomputer. Okay, we continue the visit. So this is still part of the supercomputer, it's more this, you can see. And now we are moving towards uh, what we call the tape library. So here you start seeing some tapes. This is, uh, say, all the type of tapes. So we are now in the tape library. Uh, <clears throat> So we call it a tape library because mostly we have the equipment related to our data handling system installed in this uh, in this room, and there is quite a lot of it. Uh, what you see in front now in the middle is some storage. Here is again some storage, and and all these rows are mainly storage. While what you just saw, sorry. Maybe it can go slightly back. Well, we'll see it later. It was uh, some server side. So we're, what we're now seeing in front instead is uh, some of the so-called tape libraries. This is this robotic infrastructure that is used to access the, the tapes where we store permanently the output of uh, everything that uh, we run operationally, and this is permanently, and also for some time uh, what we run in, in for research experiments. At the moment, these are, uh, let's say, old tape libraries. We are migrating the content of uh, whatever is in these tapes to the new tape library. These are the libraries that we have been using for the last uh, now several years but will not be moved to the new data center in Bologna. So we are now walking, and let's see. Okay, so here you can hardly see, but I mean, we are in front of these four uh, storage tech libraries. And uh, okay, you can just see here, this is one of these robotic uh, uh, things. You, you will get access to this video and, and a longer version later, so you can see it uh, a bit better. Uh, in each one of these tape library, we, we can hold 10,000 tapes, uh, and uh, there are quite a lot of uh, tape drives, about 200 or so tape drives, to actually you know, read and write onto those tapes. So here we continue to walk around this infrastructure. And, and this is the row of uh, servers. So it's quite a, quite a lot of servers. We are talking about some hundreds of servers that are used to, uh, to, to operate this data handling system. Operating meaning, you know, being able to store and retrieve the data from uh, from the tapes and serving the data to the users that, for example, access uh, reanalysis data that is available publicly uh, to everyone in the world. So this is all servers. And to finish up maybe this part is just to mention that uh, here we are talking about uh, the 
what you have seen is uh, the largest meteorological archive in the world. We are talking about something like 350 petabytes of the data stored into these libraries. And we are talking about a system that grows in size by 250, 300 terabytes every day. So there is new uh, data being stored at this kind of rate uh, every day. And uh, you know, the size of the archive is uh, growing kind of exponentially by, well, we try to reduce the growth these days, but uh, by between 30 and 40% every year. So we are getting now out of the tape library. We are at the back of this uh, main computer hall. And we are walking towards the extension. So these again are some other ancillary servers. I just stop by, let's see, okay, here. So mainly to highlight uh, this system that you can see here. Uh, this is uh, the system that is used to uh, operate what we call the climate data store. This is a kind of a cloud-based uh, private cloud system that is used to serve now the data for the uh, Copernicus climate change service uh, and also for the Copernicus uh, atmosphere uh, monitoring service. So here we have both the climate data store and the atmospheric data store in, into this uh, relatively small number of servers, but with the uh, uh, a fairly large amount of storage, okay, several petabytes of storage attached to this system. And we are now going to enter the extension. So that is going through this door. And we are in the extension of the uh, computer hall. This is something that was built uh, some 15 or so years ago. When uh, we signed the contract with uh, IBM, uh, which was the previous provider of uh, supercomputers uh, at ECMWF, and at that time uh, it, it became obvious that we needed the extra physical space to install uh, the various uh, systems, as uh, we, we really started having this kind of duplication of, uh, of the operational system. So this, what you see here is the second uh, cluster of these uh, great systems. And uh, I think what you well, hardly see here, but uh, this bit here is actually the, well, the first part of the new Atos system that we will also use uh, then in Bologna. So we are just going through this extension. And soon this uh, quick visit will finish. And I move, okay, just to see the last bit. Oh, okay, a little more. Okay, so well, yeah, you just have a frontal bit of the new tape library, which you saw also at the very beginning of the of the visit. So this is the system that is replacing the the the, the storage tape tape libraries that we just saw, and we are currently in the process of uh, migrating the data that is on the say old tapes to these new tapes. All the tapes have a capacity of a bit more than eight and a half terabytes per tape. In this new tape library, we, we have uh, something like 20 terabytes of uh, uh, capacity per tape. And here is finishing. So now what I will do is to uh, cover instead the a bit of the um, what is happening 
in Bologna. So ECMWF uh, uh, a few years ago agreed with uh, its member states to the need to relocate the data center uh, to Italy. There was a particular tender and uh, Italy won, uh, and in particular uh, this would be in Bologna. And uh, the, the process uh, started in terms of building the system and refurbishing the, the system, the data center. So this, uh, this new data center is in Bologna, is uh, the north part of Bologna, northeast part of Bologna, is part, is part of what is called the Technopolo in Bologna. And it is uh, an old uh, tobacco factory. So this is how it did look. Uh, when when we started the, the work, let's say, uh, so you see that there was quite a bit of uh, of uh, let's say work that needed to be done. Uh, the, the the old factory was not used for uh, a few decades. Uh, so this is how the data center will look like. Uh, uh, you can see that these are the one main data hall and another one and this is the other room where we put all the mechanical and, and engineering uh, infrastructure to support the data center so the cooling part the power part to make sure that we we can guarantee power in case we we lose power from the mains electricity and here is how it will look like when everything is finished and uh, and finally i think this was for us the occasion of uh, clearly moving everything and also reorganizing a bit the it infrastructure so in this uh, uh, new, new data center we will install a new hpc we will install a new archiving system uh, so new servers, uh, but we will move uh, uh, the tape libraries that you have just uh, seen in uh, in the previous uh, video, and and in general we will uh, you know, reorganize all the IT infrastructure. The other important part is that uh, in in Bologna, uh, at least uh, some of you are probably aware, that is the main uh, say HPC type of uh, center. In, in Italy, you have uh, Cineca, and, and, and also there will be uh, you know, proximity to what is called the, the Euro HPC pre exascale system that uh, uh, will be uh, operated by Cineca together with the other uh, supercomputing center. So it's, it's quite uh, an, an important uh, IT center in Italy. So this is uh, one of the most recent uh, images of uh, how a data hall now looks like. So what uh, work is uh, getting close to completion, ready for installation of the of the equipment. Uh, so we expect, we hope to get access to the data center in the next uh, one or two months and being able to start installing the HPC uh, soon after. And now I move to the new HPC very briefly. And uh, so uh, while we were visiting this, the, 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 the computer hall, uh, I mentioned that we, we have a, a system installed in, in Schimpfield Park. This is what we call the test and early migration system. This is uh, for ECMWF. Uh, in quite an important system to start preparing the migration of the operational workload. You, you have to understand that when, when we change a system, we, we need to you know, make sure that whatever we run on the new system is uh, stable, reliable, and so on. We, we are a 24 by 7 operational uh, uh, service. Uh, so we we cannot afford to have uh, you know interruption in our service. And therefore, the migration and testing is a very important and quite long as well phase. So it's a relatively small system in the order of a few tens of uh, servers, but it's kind of covered the the new uh, infrastructure. 
the main change uh, for, for us uh, when we move now to this Atos system is that the processor is not uh, anymore an Intel processor, but it's still uh, kind of a, a, an Intel uh, uh, compatible type of processor. So it's an AMD ROM processor. It has more cores, as you can expect, and it has also more memory in particular in this case. These are fairly uh, fat kind of nodes. Uh, so you have some details there. So, but uh, what I think is more important maybe for you is to get an idea of the full new system. So in total, we will have in the new system something like 7,000 nodes of what we call compute nodes. Uh, we will have about uh, 1 million cores. So if you compare that to before, we had 130,000 cores times two, yeah? so 250 or so. So this is about four times more cores. And uh, and then, okay, the mostly the, the system will be completely water-cooled. Yeah? That's another relative change to the network will be, the interconnect will be quite different. It's not anymore a proprietary network. It's an infiniband based network. Uh, but apart from that, uh, we are still talking about pure G, uh, CPU type of nodes. Yeah? We are not using GPUs yet. And uh, a similar type of uh, IT infrastructure. Uh, here you get a better idea of uh, the characteristic of each node, which uh, you can have a look. Mostly we'll, we'll have uh, nodes with 256 gigabytes of memory, so twice as much as what we have now, but we also have more cores, so more or less the ratio between cores and memory remains uh, similar. Uh, and then we have uh, so-called general purpose and interactive nodes with more memory. These are typically to run more serial uh, work, while the compute nodes are to run more the parallel type of work. Uh, storage, again, is quite important. And here you get an idea of uh, the amount of storage, which is one important characteristic, but also the performance. So, as you can see, the, the numbers in terms of gigabytes per second that these systems are capable of are quite uh, large. Uh, this is, of course, only, you know, this is the total kind of uh, performance that you can, can get. It's not, uh, you know, the, like a single stream type of uh, uh, performance. And you, you can only get if you this in uh, some kind of parallel mode and you use the whole storage system. But uh, these are fairly large uh, uh, bandwidth type of uh, numbers. And uh, here you have a bit of a, an idea of the how they are organized. And I think the point here is to note that this time, not only we will use two computer holes, two separate computer holes, like we have been using for quite a while, but in each one of these computer holes, we will actually have two separate compute systems for each computer hole. So in, in total, we will have four systems. So what is called here a complex. Yeah. So this is the equivalent of a, a supercomputer, a complex. Yeah? And we will have four of them, two in one room, two in the other one. Uh, sharing uh, access to two separate storage systems. The reason to move to more compute clusters than uh, the current uh, two that we, we are using is to give us uh, even more flexibility when we, we have to do, say, changes to systems. Uh, that uh, is something you have to do every, every, well, every now and then on, on every compute system. So in, in this particular case, uh, because we will have four, we can just do a change on one system, one of the four, and still have three available. So we, we, we are affecting, let's say, a smaller percentage of the total capacity 
uh, when we when we when we do make changes and that i think concludes what i wanted to say and i'm happy to i don't know answer some question let's see if there are okay any question with all okay the computer story will now be based okay so the it infrastructure so the data center will be in bologna so all the computing and storage infrastructure will be based in bologna uh, there will be a relatively small number of people in bologna with 25 or so people mainly the operators which is about 12 or so well 10 in total plus uh, the duty manager and uh, and a few the analyst and the rest will remain in in the uk at the moment okay cooling so at the moment uh, we are using uh, uh, the cray system are uh, partly liquid cooled and partly air cooled so the processors are air cooled uh, what use well if we would go back to the video uh, let's go slightly back to the video uh, and then i will stop so what you see between the, the two main cabinets uh, okay so here you see two cabinets and one unit that is smaller in between, okay? So this is called the blower unit. There are lots of fans that are blowing air that is going through these two cabinets where you have all the servers with the processors. And you can probably see it. Well, not really well, but this is another blower unit. So this is a kind of a mixed kind of cool system. While the while the Atos system, there will be some uh, direct liquid cooling on the on the processors as well. Um, how will migrate the data from Reading to Bologna? Okay. Uh, so that's a process that is one of the difficult let's say challenges because we have to move a lot of data so part of the so when we talk about the tape migration uh, we will now we are migrating from old tape technology to, to new tape technology and we are aiming to finish that before the move to Bologna then the tape themselves with the tape library they will be physically transported to Bologna so that's one aspect of, of moving data uh, but then there is uh, also a, an issue of uh, uh moving let's say workload from uh, the data center in uh, here in reading to the one in bologna while uh, we we are running both and th there there will be uh, some transfer of data over the network and synchronization if you want of uh, of uh, the data over the network and that will take uh, also quite a bit of time so for that purpose uh, we we have uh, we will have available we already have available uh, but we don't have the data center yet ready in bologna a, a quite a quick uh, connection via the giant sort of uh, european network infrastructure of uh, the capacity of uh, up to 100 gigabit per second uh, okay so gpus so the Yes, we are envisaging that is in the in the future we will uh, use GPUs or other type of uh, accelerator uh, sort of things. The, the the main issue is that at the moment our uh, model, the IFS model, is not uh, yet uh, ready to fully benefit from uh, well 
efficiently use these GPUs. This is the plan for the next procurement. So when we will go to procurement in, in about four years, probably, uh, then the, the expectation is that we will also be ready to use GPUs.